Hello to you all, mindsetters, our accounting buffins. My name is Abram, and this is Mahesh. You know by now. How are you? I'm well, Abram, and you? Um, I cannot complain. Good. Life is all about happiness. I just told Haley that in life, you make every day a, happy, a happiness day. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. A great way to start our <laughs> yeah, show with it happiness. Is. It is. What's on the menu today? Okay, um, AB, today, you don't mind me calling you AB. Not at all. That's brilliant. me. Today we're going to be focusing on budgets and mm -hmm. more specifically looking at cash budgets. So it's a very relevant topic, mm, mm, not mm. only for accountants, but so for, for everyone. Every citizen. Mm, mm. Everyone. Talking about that, it yeah. just reminds me of a budget speech. Are you going to touch some of those things? Um, are you talking about the finance minister's finance budget speech? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, we're not going to be looking at uh, but Praveen Gordon's um, budget speech. But, but yeah, we're going to be talking about budgets and about daily budgets and, and maybe focus a bit on how a budget is planned. So maybe how like Praveen that. Gordon does think at times. I like that. I'll be asking the mindset is, do, do they do a budget? Okay. Do they budget for their... Do you do a budget? I do. Brilliant. I try to stick to it. Okay. But <laughs> I always fail, but nevertheless, it's not about me. Go take your position okay. and I'll chat to our mindsetters. Well, mindsetters, there are three things that you need to know. One, you can join us on Facebook. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash learn extra to chat with me, of course, ask some questions that you have, and let's help one another. Two, go over Twitter at twitter.com uh, and just Tweet us at Len Extra. We'll follow you back. And lastly, download your notes for today's lesson on lenextra.co.za. Otherwise, on our Facebook page, we've got something very exciting that is happening. We are asking you to predict when do you think we're going to hit 41,000 likes? You know the answer? You can guess. Come on. Go over Facebook page. I'll post the link again. And make sure that you keep those guesses coming. Because currently, we've reached our 40,159 likes. And it's all thanks to you. Keep sharing the love. Learn more. Learn extra. For now, Mahesh, it is your time. Okay. Thank you so much, AB. Sure. 41,000 likes. That will be brilliant. Huh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Exciting We're stuff. aiming to have 100. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> okay. Right, guys, um, grade 12s, in today's lesson, we are looking at the cash budget, something that you have done in grade 10, you have done in grade 11, and now we're going to obviously focus on what's going to be tested as far as grade 12 is concerned. So in today's lesson, guys, we will look at the definition, what is a cash budget, as well as the importance of drawing up a cash budget. We're going to be discussing, oh, this pen again, let's just fix that. Okay, so we're going to be discussing expected receipts versus expected payments. We're going to be looking at non-cash items and then exploring the format of your cash budget. So let's get started. Right, guys, firstly, the question, what is a cash budget? Now, the term cash, remember, guys, the term cash deals with receiving money versus spending that money, making certain, uh, certain payments. So the actual definition of a cash budget, it is a forecast. The word forecast, you're looking into the future. You are trying to predict, looking into the future of the cash position of a business over a future period, a future period of time, setting out expected cash receipts as well as expected cash payments over that period of time. So once again, guys, this word expected, expected something that hasn't happened as yet, but how much of cash do I expect to receive to go into my bank account and how that cash is going to be spent? What will be the expected payments that will be made from my bank account? Right, the next question. Why is it important to prepare a cash budget? Now, AB, let me ask you, why do you think it's necessary for you to prepare a cash budget? Well, to, uh, to manage your finances, 
good at the same time to manage your cash because you you don't want your your money to be all around so that could be a, a, and also allocating essential stuff prioritizing it is a good way of structuring that okay absolutely brilliant so you will obviously prioritize certain um key expenses that you've got to pay for so mm. you obviously need to pay for your fuel you need to pay for your rent um you need to buy airtime. food mm. you need to buy <laughs> airtime um and then Maybe if there's money left over, do I'm going to do some savings. Mm. I was going to say I'm going to go out and watch a movie <laughs> with my friends <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Yes. Right. So let's look at it from a business point of view, guys. A cash budget is firstly an essential tool that is used to monitor and plan the liquidity of the business enterprise. The term liquidity, guys, remember we came across this when we looked at ratio analysis. And liquidity looks at short-term debt, short-term payments. By analyzing the cash budget, a business is able to see whether there is sufficient cash sufficient, obviously, the word sufficient we're looking at, is there enough cash to meet short-term commitments? There's the term liquidity, short-term commitments. Is there enough cash to purchase stock, to purchase additional assets? And here we're talking about fixed assets. To pay for business expenses, etc. Another reason why it is absolutely important to prepare a cash budget in the event of a shortfall of cash, shortfall meaning that if your expenses or your payments rather are more than your receipts, management can make arrangements for an overdraft, obviously with the bank, or they can make alternate plans. Now, when we talk about alternate plans, you can, for example, if you are planning to buy equipment, which is a fixed asset using cash, and there is not enough cash in terms of your budget, you can then buy that equipment on credit. Okay, so those are the reasons why it's necessary to, to draw up a cash budget. Right, guys, the next concept, absolutely important, expected receipts versus expected payments. Now, immediately, guys, you would notice we are not using the word expected income versus expected expenses because a receipt of cash is not necessarily an income. And if I had to say it the other way around, an income is not necessarily a receipt of cash. Okay, you guys got that. Same would apply to a payment. A payment is not necessarily an expense, and also an expense is not necessarily a payment. So remember, if you are doing a projected income statement, which I'm sure we're going to focus on in the weeks to come, then we would be looking at expected income versus expected expenses. But because we're focusing on cash, we are looking at future receipts of money versus future payments of actual cash or money. Right, let's start off with expected receipts. And when we talk about receipts, guys, we are talking about an inflow of cash, money coming into your bank account. Money comes into your bank account from cash sales. So when the business sells for cash, they expect money to go into their bank account. Receipts from debtors. So when your debtors pay their accounts, when you're receiving money from your debtors, that is a receipt of cash. Interest that is received, so you may have a fixed deposit or some kind of investment, and the interest that you receive on that fixed deposit is an expected receipt. Rent income that is also received. Proceeds from the sale of fixed assets. This is also something very, very important. And this is where the term income 
and receipt, I can give you guys a very, very good example of the difference between these two very important concepts. Proceeds from the sale of fixed assets would be the receipt of cash, whereas the profit made on selling that asset would be your income. So remember that, guys. Then, if the business takes out an additional loan, taking out an additional future loan, that is another receipt of cash, and also a fixed deposit that is maturing. Maturing meaning that the term has now expired and the money is now going to come back into your bank account. That would be a definite receipt of cash. All right, let's now look at your payments. Payments would be an outflow of cash from your bank account and examples of payments, cash purchase of stock when you buy trading stock, payments that are made to your creditors, payments of operating expenses, so for example, your salary that you've got to pay on a monthly basis, your telephone account, those would be all our operating expenses, your water and electricity, etc. Cash drawings. Okay, now remember, guys, the term drawings, money taken by the owner for personal use. And when we're drawing up a cash budget, we are focusing on only the cash that is taken by the owner, the physical cash that he takes from the business on a monthly basis. Any cash purchase of fixed assets, repayments of loans or repayments of any interest on loans, and then finally creating a fixed deposit is an example of an expected payment. Okay, All right, the next concept, guys, that I want to focus on before we go to an actual example or exercise on the cash budget is your format of your cash budget. Okay, now you would have noticed I haven't put up a format here, guys. That's because you've been doing this from grade 10. You've done it in grade 10, you've done it in grade 11. So this is a very quick recap of what um, the main subheadings are in that cash budget. Okay, the first subheading that you're going to come across when you do draw up your cash budget will be one for your receipts. So receipts, one more time, guys. It's a forecast of all cash receipts or inflows for the budget period itself. The next subheading, expected payments, a forecast of all your cash payments or your outflows for that budget period. Then we are able to work out whether, let's go for green, whether we've got a cash surplus or a cash shortfall. And again, guys, I'm sure you've come across these terms before. Cash surplus is money that is left over. Cash shortfall, obviously the word shortfall, clearly an indication that your payments are much more than your actual receipt. So let's look at that definition. A surplus arises when the expected receipts are greater, so your expected receipts are greater than your payments. A shortfall, on the other hand, arises when payments are much greater than your receipts. Okay. Right, so we've touched on a bit of concepts. We've touched on the format of a cash budget. AB, I think we're now ready to start with um, an actual exercise on the cash budget. Do we have any questions so far? No, we don't have any qu questions, but I think we can do that right after the break. What do okay, you think? Okay, yeah, I think that's brilliant. But that's adding on your quote, there's mm -hmm. just this famous quote that yeah. everybody talks about when they talk about budget. I'm not sure if you'll agree and mm -hmm. put it on your definition. It says a budget tells us what we can afford, but it doesn't keep us from buying it. Oh. What do you think? Absolutely true. Right, that yeah. is a famous <laughs> quote from William Feather. Hope you enjoyed that one. Okay. We'll keep them coming. Mindset is stay tuned.
Welcome back to you all accounting buffins still on Lennox Road Live, a show that you never want to miss, especially when it comes to accounting today. We're talking about cash budget. But before we go to that route, you know, Mahesh, taking mm. more into the concept and other stuff, mm -hmm. let me just tell the mindset is about this huge and exciting campaign that we have. Okay. Mindset is, we are beginning a campaign next week about a new movie that is set to hit your screens on the 7th of June, which is called After Earth. It is staring by Will Smith and his son, Jaden Smith. So, f to find out about the movie and how you could win exciting and big prizes, watch this trailer. I'll see you after it. In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. Not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you, and he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Now go make some good memories together. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. There's an emergency beacon in the tail section of our ship. Approximately 100 kilometers from here. We need to retrieve that beacon. Or we're going to die. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. <laughs> Together, we will survive. I hear something. It has found you. We must abort this mission. You wouldn't give any other ranger that order! You are not a ranger. You are my son. Remember, danger is very real. Fear is a choice. If we are going to survive this, we fight. Right, I hope Mindset says you're now ready to explore the world after Earth. And it's such an amazing trailer. I'm sure you would agree with me, Mahesh. Mm, it's it awesome. Was. I it really is. can't wait to see it. Me as well. Yeah, talking about that, here are, are some few comments that we have. Mindset says, all you need to do, this is what you have to do to win these awesome prizes next week. Go over our events page, which is called After Earth. I'll post the link on our Facebook page. And already, some guys are on the page. We have Betty Gardner. Oh, that's the same name, Gardner. She says, I love this, and I'm in, Abram. And other co few comments are from Makove Shadrach saying, I'm up and ready. Uh, Garabo, our mindset of the month, says, it sounds interesting. And all the guys saying, I'm loving it, love it so much, just can't wait. If you can't wait, like me, go over Facebook page. I've shared the link, and make sure that you join us. After Earth, Life After Earth, it is a movie that is set 1,000 years into the future. Will you still be alive? I don't know. Oh. Mahesh, Whoa. will you still be alive? I don't know about me. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> Maybe I'm you'll sure be alive. accounting will still be you'll alive. You'll be alive counting our, 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 our yeah, cash, non-cash sure. non items. Non-cash items. items and cash items. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's continue. Okay. Right, guys, um, before we took a break, we were ready to tackle our question on budgets. But before we do that, one very last concept that I need to go through is your non-cash items. Now, remember the word, oh, this pen. Oh, it's, it's probably me and my it's excitement after today. watching you're, the movie. You're so exci you're <laughs> the, too excited. The trailer, <laughs> probably. <laughs> right. Non-cash items, guys. Um, these are items that have absolutely no impact on cash whatsoever. So we need to be aware of these items because these items might be in um, your exam question on cash budgets and you need to remember when you come across these non-cash items, I need to make sure that I do not include these in my cash budget. What are these non-cash items? I'm talking about depreciation, trading stock deficit, then you have your profit 
or your loss on sale of assets. There are few more non-cash items, but these are the most important one, ones, guys, that you need to be aware of. You need to remember not to include them in your cash budget. Right, we're now ready to start with our question. And um, let, let's go for it, guys. Let's start with question one, which was taken from the March 2011 paper. You are provided with the cash budget of Bosman traders for the three months ended 28th February 2011. So immediately from that information, I know that I am given a cash budget for the months of December, the month of January, as well as the month ending February, three months ended. The business is owned by Alfred Bossman, so immediately I know I'm dealing with a sole trader. All right, let's now go to the information. So there's the cash budget that is given to us for the three months that I've mentioned, for the months of December, January, and February. And as I mentioned, your format, guys, expected receipts. Let's quickly go through the expected receipts for this particular business. Your cash sales, and in brackets they tell us 75% of total sales, which means if I had to ask you what then would be credit sales, that would be your 25%. Okay, just making little notes before we get to the actual questions. Then debtors, here we're referring to receipts from debtors, 30 days less 5%, so de debtors are expected to pay within 30 days, and they receive 5% off their payment, which immediately tells us that we collect 95%, 95% after subtracting the 5%. Rent income, then we've got interest on fixed deposit, so this business has a fixed deposit. Capital that the owner obviously is going to be contributing to the business, so there's our expected receipts from the information. Then moving on to our expected payments, we've got drawings, and remember this would refer to your cash drawings. Then motor vehicle expenses for the months ahead, fixed deposit, this would be a fixed deposit that would be not maturing, let's just fix that, but obviously a fixed deposit that has been or will be created. Okay, then deposit on vehicle purchase, so the business is planning on buying a new vehicle for the business, monthly repayments that will be made on the vehicle, interest that needs to be paid, and then we've got salary and wages. Right, the next part of our cash budget is your cash surplus or shortfall. Cash at the beginning of the month, this refers to your bank balance, guys, at the beginning of the month, and then your cash at the end of the month, again, your bank balance, but this time expected bank balance at the end of the month. Okay. Right, now looking at this information or this cash budget, immediately we notice there's quite a few question marks. So let's just draw your attention to that, which means that the question itself is going to want us to complete this cash budget or certain parts of this cash budget. Right, let's now look at the required and let's tackle or let's see exactly what we need to do as far as this question is concerned. Okay, the first question, guys. Explain why a business needs to prepare why a business needs to prepare a cash budget every year. Okay, or it could be for every three months or whatever the case may be, and this is for two marks. Okay. 
All right, now, as far as the answer is concerned, guys, I'm not going to spend too much of time on this because we've obviously spoken about this already. Um, why do we need to prepare a cash budget? We've tackled that, and that's something that you can pick up from the notes already. So let's move on to the next question, okay, because we obviously want to tackle things that we haven't spoken about. The next question we've got, calculate the figures indicated by A to E in the cash budget. Okay, so in our cash budget, we've got certain figures that are missing, and they want us now to calculate these missing figures. So let's go to the information. Okay, and there we've got A, B, C, D, and E, and let's calculate these figures. So let's start off with A. Okay. Right, A, if we inspect A, A is obviously your cash at the beginning of the month. Cash at the beginning of the month, and it is for the month of January. Okay, right, so if we look at what is our expected bank balance for the month of January, or at the beginning of January, this is something, guys, that you've learned from grade 10, the closing bank balance for December, which was 123,000, becomes my opening balance for the month of January. So my closing balance, guys, for December, on the 31st of December, cash on hand is expected to be 123,000. That becomes my opening balance for the month of January. Okay, so A, absolutely easy, an amount of 123,000. Okay, all right, easy marks. Let's look at the next um, letter that we need to calculate. So we've done A, now let's look at B. Okay, B represents your cash at the end of the month, and B is for the month of, still the month of January. So in order for me to get my bank balance, at the end of January, all I'm doing is I am taking my cash surplus for the month of January, which is 45,000, okay? And I am adding my opening balance for the month of January, which was 123,000, to give me my balance at the end of January. Let's get the calculator out there. Okay, at the end of January, it would be 45,000 plus 123,000. So my bank balance at the end of January, 168,000. Okay, guys, it can't get easier than this. Absolutely simple. 168,000 is that expected cash balance at the end of Jan. Okay, so we've done B. Let's now move on to C. Okay, C, we're now obviously looking at the next budget month, which is the month of February. And C represents whether there is an actual cash surplus or a shortage, uh, a deficit of cash. So let's look at how we're going to calculate C. Okay, again, guys, not difficult because you're using your grade 10, your grade 11 knowledge. In order for me to calculate whether there's a cash surplus or a shortage, all I've got to do is look at my expected cash receipts my expected cash payments and examining these two. Immediately I notice my payments are much higher than my receipts, which means there's not gonna be a surplus, but rather a shortfall of cash. Okay, so shortfall, negative amount in brackets, and let's calculate that shortfall. So we've got a receipt of 140,000. That's what we expect to receive minus 390,000, that's what we expect to spend. So we've got a shortfall of 250,000. Okay, so C would be 250,000. 
Okay. All right. Let's just write this at the bottom. So C would be 250,000. Okay, which immediately shows you that this, this business obviously is planning on spending much more in that particular budget month. Right, two more to go. We're now looking at D. Okay, so for D, again, I'm asked to calculate my cash at the beginning of the month. And again, guys, this is now a repeat because at the beginning of the month, which would be the month of February, whatever balance my cash balance or my bank balance was at the end of January becomes my opening balance for the month of February. So that would have been B. B would be 45,000. Oh, sorry, no, it wasn't 45,000, it was 168,000. Okay, so that becomes my bank balance at the beginning of February, 168,000. Okay, right, and then finally, the last letter, missing letter that we've calculated, that we've got to calculate is E. So let's look at E. E wants me to calculate what is my expected bank balance at the end of February. So again, guys, straightforward, not difficult. Let's just put that down a bit. In order for me to get E, I've got a cash shortfall of 250000 Okay, I've obviously got a positive amount of 168000 in my bank account, which means E would be then, I've got my negative 250,000 plus a positive 168,000 at the end of February in my bank account, or not in my bank account rather, I would have an overdraft of 82,000. So money not in my bank account, but I'd obviously have to borrow from the bank, so we would have a negative 82,000. Okay, so not difficult, guys. How are we doing there, Abram? Do we have any questions? We have some two qu questions. Okay. Would you like to take them now? Um, we can. We can take them quickly right. before we move on. All right. Yeah. The first one is from um, Casey Cole Smith. It says, so profit or loss on sale of asset, asset is not proceeds from sales of fixed asset? No, it's not. Okay, it's, it's absolutely not because the profit on sale of asset, and what I'm going to do is, um, before we actually take a break, I just want to explain this concept very quickly because this is something that um, a lot of our uh, grade 12s battle with and, and they do get confused with. So guys, when you draw up your asset disposal account, and this is something that I know the grade 12s are very familiar with, let's assume I've got equipment okay, with a cost price of 10000 my accumulated depreciation, is an amount of 7,000, okay? And this asset was sold for, let's assume, 4,000. Okay, so my bank, I've sold this asset for 4,000. I've obviously made a profit on sale of asset. If I have to work it out quickly, I've made a profit of 1,000, and I know you guys know exactly how I'm getting these figures. But very quickly, what I want to illustrate is the difference between a receipt and a payment, uh, sorry, a receipt and an income. Okay, the bank, what I physically received for selling this equipment, I received 4,000 Rand. So 4,000 Rand is gonna go into my bank account. That's what I physically received. So that 4,000 Rand is my receipt of cash and belongs in my cash budget. However, the income, the income that goes into that projected income statement would be the profit on sale of asset, which is the 1,000. Okay, so remember, a big difference between a receipt and a profit. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have, can we take One a break? One last more. Okay. One last more. Why is, it, why, why is it a good idea to compare budgeted against actual figures? Okay, absolutely important. Okay, because remember, if you do not stick to your budget, you might overspend. So, for example, if you've budgeted for airtime <laughs> of, let's say, 200 Rand per month, yes. but you've bought airtime for 300 Rand, 
obviously you've spent more than what you actually budgeted. Mm. And clearly it will tell you that, hang on, I'm either using my cell phone a bit too much and I need to cut down, or I need to realize that I've, I've actually got to allocate more money to my cell phone because I need to make urgent calls, I need to make important calls. Mm. So you always compare budget against what you've actually spent. That's actually a good yeah. thin line between, you know, knowing what you should spend on and what you shouldn't spend exactly. on. Exactly. Because you have a guideline exactly. now. Exactly. Right? On that note, yeah. let's take a quick commercial break. Okay. But before we take it, here's a, a, an awesome quote I found that there's a secret in getting rich in life. Do you mm. know what is it, Mehesh? Please tell me. The secret is counting the few things in your life that do not cost money but still keep you happy. That is the secret of being rich. Oh. Not money that you have, but the little things that you have that do not cost any money. See you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. A very interesting topic has been hitting the studio during the break time, and I just have to share this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't hold myself. But it's all about budgeting, asking ourselves that, do we ever budget, and is it very is it necessary that we budget and it's a big question especially to our adults you might be sitting with your parents at home just ask them do they budget and do they even teach you how to budget if they do why and are they sticking to that budget because i had to ask james mm. does he do a budget and he's like no i don't believe in budgeting because what, what is the importance of budgeting knowing very well that the money that you earn you know you can even count it on your hands yeah. but uh, from from an older uh, perspective what is your advice in terms of people budgeting and sticking to that budget? Is it necessary? I think it's in today's times, it's absolutely vital. It is so important that you budget and you try and save. Um, I know it's difficult. Mm. It is difficult mm. with, the, with the rising costs but it's and, possible. and all of that, but it is possible. So and that you can avoid those loan sharks yeah. and also advo avoid being in debt, owing yeah. everyone. That, that's absolutely true. And remember, Abram, the kids, they can budget as well because mm. their parents sometimes give them an allowance. Yes. Those that do receive an allowance, they need to know exactly how they're going to be spending that money, whether they're going to be keeping some money aside. So mm -hmm. it starts from a young age um, and it's necessary. Is there a great distinction between budgeting and saving? Um, in, in terms of difference, yes, there is a difference between the two because obviously you budget for what you're going to spend on, but in your budget, whatever you do not spend on, that's your surplus. That's what you're saving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting <laughs> talk. You know, I, we can talk, you know, for yeah, hours, but let's can. get to questions. Okay. Right, guys, let's move on now to the next question. Um, the next question, the rent income. Okay, we've got our pen. The rent income was increased by 8% from the 1st of Jan 2011. Calculate the rent income figure for Jan 2011. Okay, three very, very easy marks, guys. Absolutely straightforward. Um, something that you've got to get correct in your exams if you do get a type of question like this. Your rent income for December is 9,000 and all we're doing guys is we are adding on 8%. So let's do that. So let's clear that. 9,000. Okay. Right. Many ways of doing this times 8%. Okay. So the rent is going to increase by 720 Rand, which means your rent for January would be 9,000 plus 720 to give us 9,720. Okay, so absolutely simple, absolutely straightforward. Okay, All right, let's move on to the next question. In the next question, we are asked to refer to the salaries and wages in the cash budget, calculate the percentage increase granted to the employees from the 1st of January 2011. So obviously, in the last question, we were asked to calculate the new rent income, but in this question, they want us to calculate what is that percentage increase that the employees have received. So let's go to the information. And in the information, we obviously go into payments because that's where I'm gonna find my salaries and my wages. Salary and wages, 
for the month of December is 105,000. And then for the months of January and then February, it's increased to 109,200. So let's work out the percentage increase. Now remember guys, in order for me to calculate my percentage increase, all I'm doing is looking at the actual increase. So 109,200 minus 105,000. I'm going to then divide this by the salary and wages for the month before the increase, 105,000 in December. Okay, and I'm going to multiply this by 100 to get my answer as a percentage. Okay, so let's get that calculator out. Let's clear that. So 109, 200 minus 105. Okay, 4,200, divide that by 105,000. Okay, and then if I multiply that by 100, the percentage increase is 4%. Shoo, Abram, 4% increase. Mm. Do you think you're going to be happy with that if you were working for this uh, business? It's, it's, it's not so much, but I guess it's something. It's something. Unlike a loss. Okay. It it, it's something, but, uh, but not that much. But not that much okay. at all. Le let's look at the next question. Let's, let's go to back to our question. There we go. The next question is going to ask exactly what I've just asked Abram. Refer to the salary and wages in your cash budget. In your opinion, will the employees be satisfied with this increase and then they want us to briefly explain okay right now how do we measure this increase the increase is four percent okay now we need to look at whether the workers would be happy with this now remember when your increase is decided on as an employee how is that increase really decided on abram do you have any idea what, no. what do we normally look at? When we... Or what, what does the business look at? In terms of increase? Yeah. It looks at uh, the number of sales that have been made. Okay, number of sales, profit. Is the business making profit? Yes. It also looks at something called the CPI. Okay, Consumer Price Index. Index. And here I'm talking about inflation. Mm. Okay, now if you look at the inflation rate for the last two to three years, inflation is rising. Okay, and at the moment, something that I've checked up and you guys can check up as well, the inflation rate is sitting at 5,9%. Now, your increase is normally based on that inflation rate, that CPI index. Okay, so looking at the 5,9%, and if we now compare this 4%, do you think employees are going to be satisfied? No. I don't think so. They're not. <laughs> Good. Okay, so employees are not going to be satisfied. Okay, and the reason why they're not going to be satisfied, the increase that they are receiving, the increase is lower than the inflation rate. Okay, so guys, remember that for the exam. Remember this concept, um, CPI. Abram, mm. are you going to remember this? Of course. Okay. <laughs> Consumer? Price index. index. Okay. Right, let's move on now, guys, to the next question. Do we have any further questions? Uh, we're just having comments on our Facebook page. Okay. And some mindset is, you know, saying this is the most difficult part of accounting. Is it? Mm. Really? Mm. Okay. They really don't enjoy it that much. They don't enjoy budgets that mm. much. No. Okay. <laughs> right, let's try and make it a bit simple but for well them. But while it's still critical, yeah, whether they enjoy it or not. It's still, it's still absolutely important. Right, the next question, guys. As the auditor or the internal auditor, you discover that the actual motor e vehicle expenses for December 2010 
were 5,420. Provide two points that you would include in your internal auditor's report to Alfred. Now, remember, Alfred is obviously the owner. Okay. All right, so the actual motor vehicle expense for the month of December is 5,420. So this is your actual. Let's now go to budget. And let's look at what did we budget for as far as this uh, motor vehicle expense is concerned. Okay, so in our information, okay, we've got motor vehicle expense, and for the month of December, we've budgeted 4,000. So let's take that figure through. So our actual budget, okay, let's extend that, was 4,000. Right, that was the budget. Okay, so clearly, guys, looking at those figures, you can see that you've spent much more than what you budgeted for. Um, the motor vehicle budget was 4000 That's what you expected to pay for um, servicing your vehicles and other related uh, motor vehicle expense itself. But you've spent 5420 Rand. So as the internal auditor, what would you rec recommend? What would you suggest? Or what would you include in your report to the owner? Okay, so the first thing that I would include in my report is this bit of information. In other words, that the actual was 5,420, while the budget or the budgeted figure for motor vehicle expense was 4,000. Now, clearly, there's an indication that there could be misuse of assets. In other words, you could get employees who are allowed to drive the vehicle that could be probably um, going to the mall, doing some personal shopping, or whatever the case may be. There could be misuse of that motor vehicle. Okay. Something else that you can mention is that he should... Um, it, it, it could be a matter of um, probably he's not servicing the vehicle enough. And as a result of that, there could be breakdowns and... Um, um, uh, I don't know, AB, you help me. There could be certain parts that need to be replaced mm -hmm. because of not regularly servicing Seem the vehicle the itself. Yes. Yes. So these are things that you can mention to the owner in your report. Okay. All right, the next question, guys. Okay. We've got a new vehicle will be purchased for 139500 Okay, let's just put that figure in properly. So 139500. On the 31st of January 2011, the business will pay a deposit of 20% and the balance, the balance which would be, if I'm paying a deposit of 20%, my balance would be 80%, will be financed by East Bank. Alfred will repay East Bank in equal monthly installments over three years from the 28th of Feb 2011. Interest will be paid to East Bank monthly on the balance outstanding at a rate of 11%. Okay, all right, let's look at what they want us to calculate. The first question, calculate the interest payable to East Bank in February 2011. Okay, so an interest calculation. Again, guys, really not difficult. You've done much more difficult questions on interest calculations when you did financial statements. So this one should be an absolute breeze. All right, let's firstly work out what is the balance of this loan that we are taking out from East Bank. So in order for me to calculate the balance, my figure at the top given to me was 139,500. So let's put that in, 139,500. Okay, if I multiply this by 80%, I'm going to get my balance. The interest rate is 11%, so let's multiply that by 11%. And remember, we're calculating the interest payable for one month, February 2011, so times 1 over 12. Okay. 
All right. Um, AB, do you think we can do this calculation quickly? Quickly, sir. Okay, quickly. so 139,500, okay, times that by 80%, so that's the balance of the loan, times by 11%, okay, and I'll divide that by 12 because it's only for one month, so the interest repayment or the interest paid will be 1,023 rand. Okay, so 1,023 rand. All right, I think that's all we have time for. Yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you very much, Mahesh, and have a blessed week ahead. Okay, you, know, you mean the weekend ahead? The weekend, <laughs> uh, your, ne your week too. Okay, Because Thank I'll you see so you much. next week. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> Hopefully, see thank you, you very much. Okay. And to you all mindsetters, thank you for watching this great lesson on accounting. I hope you have learned a lot. And now here's an awesome quote that I want to leave you with. The best way to make happy money, it is to make money, not your hobby, not everything else, but make money make you. Let money make you. That's what they say. <laughs> that is a, a, a quote from uh, Scott Alexander. Make money make you. Thank you very much, guys. And otherwise, let's be on the page. Predict when are we going to reach for 1,000. That's it from accounting. We love you. Peace.